The main target of this fake news is the uh, emotions and the psychology of uh, the mass media consumers, both sides. Uh, and when I say mass media consumers, it doesn't mean that it's uh, these these news appear in the mainstream media, but mainly th- uh, in social media, which are uh, widely read. And generally, uh, we have seen that they try to uh, provoke negative emotions uh, by showing uh, pictures or um, making news that do not exist concerning symbols. Welcome to the Eliamet podcast series. Hello, this is Ioannis Grigoriadis. I'm a senior fellow at the head of the Turkey program at the Hellenic Foundation for European Foreign Policy and associate professor at Tilting University in Ankara. I'm also holding the Jean Monnet Chair of European Studies there. Today, I'm glad to be joined in a podcast discussion by Vangelis Sarateos. Vangelis Sarateos is a leading Greek journalist who is a research associate at Eliamep. And uh, we have collaborated uh, on a, a recent seminar uh, organized by Eliamep uh, with the aim to explore the role of media in Greek Turkish relations. This seminar uh, was part of a program that was uh, uh, supported by the analysis and brought together uh, Eliamep and the Istanbul Policy Center, one of Turkey's leading think tanks with the aim to explore uh, Greek and Turkish public opinions views of each other. So uh, five opinion surveys were produced in the context of this project. And uh, in the end, as a corollary to the project, there was this seminar that brought together uh, Greek and Turkish young journalists uh, to discuss and listen to uh, senior figures in the field of media and Greek-Turkish relations uh, regarding uh, how things have developed over the last decades in Greek-Turkish relations through a media lens. So I will uh, give the floor to Vangelis, who has been working in Turkey for many years. So he's one of the very few persons with this uh, unique knowledge of the field. I will ask the first question, Vangeli. How have things changed regarding the media coverage of Greek-Turkish relations over the last decades? Uh, Thank you, Yanis. Um, We have seen uh, different changes because we have been through different periods. So we can um, uh, roughly uh, divide the periods uh, between the uh, early 80s until uh, late 90s and then uh, uh, beginning of 2000 to, uh, to today. Well, the first period, more or less 20 years, uh, was a period that was uh, mainly uh, dominated by uh, a staunch antagonism between Greece and Turkey. We had different uh, crises. We had um, uh, the uh, the seismic uh, crisis in uh, 87. We had the uh, EMEA crisis uh, in 96. Uh, we have the Ojalan crisis in 99. Uh, and uh, then, uh, in the summer of 99, we had uh, the uh, earthquakes, both sides. Uh, and this was the first time that, uh, media-wise at least, something changed. We saw uh, a very um, uh, broad interest, uh, both from Turkish media, uh, uh, concerning Greece and uh, the earthquake there. And of course, we saw uh, a, a, a lot of uh, interest and uh, of, of Greek media uh, for uh, for Turkey and uh, the uh, earthquake. Well, it was the first time that we saw from both sides um, positive reporting uh, with uh, a very uh, deep sense of, uh, of empathy from both sides. So this... Uh, was uh, uh, the first uh, time that media not only changed their way of reporting uh, to each other, on each other, but also it was the first time after, just after the earthquakes, that uh, media started uh, to come together. Uh, Then we had uh, a very uh, very positive period uh, uh, until uh, the uh, the beginning of uh, 2000, uh, 
2000. And this positive period became even more positive after 2002 and the coming to power of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the uh, AKP uh, government. Um, and what also changed after this uh, period, after the 2000s, is uh, that from the Greek side, we had more and more uh, reporting on uh, domestic politics and social issues uh, on Turkey. The fact that uh, it was a, a, a government, AKP government, uh, coming from uh, the, the roots of uh, political Islam in Turkey was uh, something that attracted the uh, the interest of uh, the Greek uh, media uh, and uh, the fact that uh, uh, this uh, reporting was generally positively uh, read in Turkey uh, also created a positive uh, agenda on, on, on Turkish media concerning Greece. Uh, so we had this uh, a long uh, period of uh, positive uh, reporting from both sides uh, that lasted uh, more or less 10 years and uh, things started to change again after 2013 and the uh, Gezi uh, events where for the first time uh, Greek media started to become again more critical uh, towards uh, Turkish, uh, the Turkish government uh, and this also was reflected on, on, on how Turkish media started to report on Greece. Uh, after 2013 uh, and until today, we can say that we have seen uh, um, a, a, a big change of, of uh, reporting because we had, again, uh, different crises. We have uh, the, the crisis uh, uh, in uh, 2020, with uh, the immigrants, we had the, the crisis also uh, in uh, the summer of uh, 2020 uh, in, in the Aegean, then the, another crisis uh, between Greece and Turkey in uh, 2022. So all these crises uh, shaped again a very negative reporting from both sides, uh, where mainly uh, Turkey was portrayed uh, as uh, uh, a uh, provocative uh, neighbor that was really uh, looking for uh, for trouble and was sometimes in the media they gave the sense that Turkey was uh, almost about to invade Greece and on the other side from the Turkish media we had uh, a lot of uh, reporting uh, on uh, how uh, Greece uh, allegedly treated uh, immigrants uh, and uh, how Greece was also uh, provoking Turkey. So this, uh, the, this, this period uh, between uh, 2020 and uh, 23 was again uh, a reminder of this uh, period uh, during the 80s and 90s where the, uh, the media of both sides uh, played also a negative role um, in the relations uh, between the two countries. Now, lately, we have seen again um, um, uh, an ease of the tensions between uh, the two countries, uh, sort of uh, rapprochement, which is also reflected again uh, in both media with uh, uh, this time uh, not really positive reporting, but actually uh, abstaining from negative reporting. So um, this uh, is more or less the the uh, the dynamic of of the media of the last uh, almost 40 years and the big question that uh, we tried to answer during uh, our seminar but uh, i think that we could not really uh, see clear is uh, if the media uh, follows the politicians and and shape the uh, narratives of the politicians, or if the politicians follow the media and, uh, and 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 reproduce the narratives of the media. So this is this was one of the of the major questions of uh, of this uh, seminar. But can we talk about a coherent view of each other? So we can talk about a single dominant view in the media world, or can we argue about 
alternative or even possibly conflicting views uh, in the Greek and Turkish media of this time? Well, um, we, we can say more or less that the uh, there is a sort of coherence uh, when it comes to the Greek media, uh, roughly speaking, big picture of, of Turkey is of a very big neighbor that uh, is in a sort of expanding uh, foreign policy that wants to uh, change um, many uh, things, uh, that wants to expand its power beyond its borders, either militarily or uh, with other means. Uh, and it is generally uh, seen as a very uh, difficult and by times dangerous um, neighbor. Oh, the side of the Turkish media now, uh, again, roughly speaking, uh, we have this uh, image of, uh, of Greece as being, uh, as it is often uh, said and, and written, the, uh, a spoiled child, uh, which means that uh, the Turkish media portray Greece as a small country that is uh, either used uh, by uh, other bigger countries who want to harm Turkey through Greece or tries to mobilize uh, these uh, great powers against uh, Turkey. And also lately, the last four or five years, we have also seen uh, this uh, picture of, of, of Greece as a, as a terrible land for, for uh, immigrants. This is true. And of course, all these issues touch upon another very important aspect of uh, media uh, politics in our times, which is, of course, uh, media manipulation, fake news. We live in an age of fake news and the seminar discussed this as well. So how have fake news influenced Greek Turkish relations? What was the main theme that appeared in the seminar? Well, uh, the, the, the main target of this fake news is the uh, emotions and the psychology of uh, the mass media consumers, both sides. Uh, and when I say mass media consumers, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, this, this news appear in the mainstream media, but mainly uh, in social media, which are uh, widely read. And generally, uh, we have seen that they try to uh, provoke negative emotions uh, by showing uh, pictures or um, making news that do not exist concerning symbols. Uh, for example, uh, there was this uh, picture, a fake picture, uh, of uh, a Greek flag on the Acropolis, uh, mid-mast, and uh, the news was that uh, the Greek state declared a national day of grief because uh, Hagia Sophia has become a mosque, which was absolutely not true. But with this support of this picture and the text, uh, probably many, many consumers of, of news in, in Turkey, especially social news, uh, believed it. Uh, and this is one of the most uh, characteristic examples of how these fake news work, because they actually target these emotions, because uh, from both sides, uh, Hagia Sophia is a very important symbol. These fake news try to mobilize these negative emotions against the other. But they haven't been considered as a sort of a leading aspect of uh, Greek-Turkish media relations, so far at least, right? So it is something no, no. that is present, but it is something that to some degree remains still under control. Because if we That's can uh, look into other international like disputes, issues, and countries where relations are sensitive, then we may argue that uh, the extent to which uh, fake news play a stronger role there may be larger than in Greek Turkish relations. That is true. For example, uh, and, and of course it's not the same thing and we cannot compare, but just to give an example, when we see the, 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 the power and the impact of fake news in the Russian-Ukrainian uh, war, uh, then we see how, how much... Uh, dangerous fake news is, are. But of course, in the case of Greece and Turkey, we, we are far, far away from, from this level. Uh, however, we can uh, see a, a potential danger because uh, these news, uh, as, as we, we just said, are mainly consumed by people using social media. And these uh, 
consumers are mainly younger generations. So uh, it might at one point become problem or a potential uh, risk because more and more young people uh, consume this, uh, this news. But there is another aspect of uh, framing maybe that is uh, very important for Greek Turkish relation. And this is something that we've already discussed in the seminar. So this is uh, what we call national issues. Uh, many of the issues in Greek Turkish relations are named as national in both Greece and Turkey. So how does this affect the discussion on them? Uh, uh, well, there was a special session in the seminar on this. So, Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, what we have seen all through these years from both sides is that when it comes to what you just said uh, is, is, is called as national uh, issue or uh, national uh, interest, then uh, the media uh, have not been able to play almost any role because the 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 frame in both sides is so uh, so hard to break uh, that uh, we have seen that uh, even during the periods of positive reporting, uh, every time uh, these kind of national issues was coming to the front, uh, the reporting remained the same for both sides. So uh, there is no actually critical uh, view or critical journalism concerning these uh, almost sacrosanct uh, national issues from both sides. And that was, again, uh, another uh, question we uh, tried to, uh, uh, to enlighten to enlighten uh, uh, if if the media finally played uh, uh, a really positive role in Greek-Turkish relations, or if they just again followed the uh, political uh, atmosphere and adapted. So uh, we have seen that mainly media did not take any leading role in changing these uh, hardcore uh, national issues, again, from both sides. There was one special session on the uh, survey series that I've already mentioned in the beginning of this conversation. Uh, this, of course, was a great opportunity to share a very rich set of data on the views of Greeks and Turks on each other, as well as their relationship. And uh, this, of course, was the opportunity to highlight some interesting uh, observations about uh, similarities and differences in the ways that Greeks and Turks look into each other. Would you like to identify for us maybe two or three important points? Well, the, the first important point, I think, is that uh, in both sides, the, uh, the, the people who uh, want uh, a political, diplomatic, peaceful solution of the uh, issues between Greece and Turkey is the, the great majority. So there is only a small, uh, really small minority in both sides who would be uh, willing to accept uh, a military uh, solution, meaning a war between the two countries in order to solve these uh, issues. And this, this is a, a very... A, ne a positive indicator of uh, the, the psychology of both sides. Uh, another uh, important uh, thing is that uh, there is a, a very low uh, trust in both sides uh, or in media. Uh, in uh, both sides, media were the last uh, uh, and the least trusted uh, institutions Mm, uh, and uh, while for both sides, again, the most trusted institutions were the military and the police, uh, which shows, uh, first of all, as we, which is evident and obvious, that uh, the media uh, did not manage to play their role and uh, inspire trust by some uh, uh, objective or more or less objective reporting. Uh, not only on Greek-Turkish relations, of course, but generally speaking, and also the fact that uh, in both sides there is this feeling 
uh, that the military uh, is the most trusted institutions for different reasons. For Turkey, because Turkish foreign policy the last uh, almost decade has been uh, heavily um, militarized, so the army does play uh, a very active role in uh, in Turkish foreign policy. And on the Greek side, uh, precisely because there is this feeling uh, of threat from uh, from uh, Turkey. Thank you very much. Let me add another dimension we consider to be important in uh, uh, what uh, appears as a comparison of the views of Greek and Turkish uh, societies. Turkey appears much more present in Greek public discourse uh, compared to Greece's presence in the Turkish public discourse. So uh, this is uh, linked to the fact that uh, Greeks have visited Turkey more often, like more than 35% of Greeks have stated that they visited Turkey at least once in their lives, while the number of Turks that have visited Greece is no more than 3%. But on the other hand, uh, this discussion also uh, refers to some consolidated opinions uh, that are stronger in Greece compared to Turkey. So the diversity of views about Turkey in Greece appear to be more homogeneous across age groups, across uh, uh, ideological affiliations, across gender compared to Turkey. Uh, and what is also interesting is that uh, in the case of Turkey, uh, political affiliation appears to be a significant uh, predictor of views on Greek-Turkish relations in Greece. While in the case of Greece, this is not the case. It's more likely uh, that uh, a certain set of opinion about Turkey is accepted across uh, the Greek political spectrum. Let me highlight here that all the data of these surveys are available online and we offer also the raw format of them. So researchers can use them to run regressions and try to find new interesting sort of conclusions uh, that our research has not highlighted. So I would invite anybody interested in Greek-Turkish relations with uh, some quantitative uh, method skills to, to look into that and maybe something very interesting can come out. But we also had the opportunity towards the end of our seminar to discuss another critical dimension of Greek-Turkish relations over the last decade, energy. Energy has been in the heart of Greek-Turkish relations since the 1970s when hydrocarbons became the topic of uh, the day and the decade may be in Greek-Turkish relations. Uh, that was oil extraction possibilities in the Aegean. Later, the interest shifted from the Aegean towards the Eastern Mediterranean with the discoveries of natural gas reserves. Uh, I would argue that the big opportunity was missed there for both countries that uh, didn't manage to find a way to resolve their uh, disputes uh, in that respect. Now we have another opportunity, which is the renewable sector. So renewables may become another instrument uh, for collaboration between Greece and Turkey, assuming, of course, that the big problems that have been uh, looming for decades can be resolved. So uh, what was the what was your view from the discussions we had in the seminar of Angelion Bill? Well, I think that, uh, as you mentioned, the, there is a very uh, big difference between the uh, energy uh, until uh, 2000s and now, because uh, when it comes to uh, all these old types of energies, uh, mainly oil, uh, uh, even even uh, natural gas, which is somewhere in the middle, uh, they could have been uh, a big ch chance of cooperation, uh, but actually uh, it was the opposite, they became uh, a matter of, of deep dispute. But uh, as we have seen uh, in the seminar, the renewables are a completely different story. Uh, by nature uh, and by dynamic, they can uh, bring together Greece and Turkey uh, precisely because they are both countries 
uh, in uh, a corridor of uh, of uh, energy, not only the old type of energy, but renewables. And uh, because of uh, the fact that renewables can uh, bring uh, easier uh, people together because they do not uh, really uh, depend on issues of uh, national sovereignty. So uh, renewables uh, have the potential to become uh, uh, something that can bring together uh, Greece and Turkey uh, in energy. Uh, and uh, this is something that, as we've seen during the seminar, should be more uh, explored by uh, by politicians in, in, in both sides, but also uh, by the business world. I, I very much agree that renewables may pose a great opportunity for collaboration uh, between Greece and Turkey. And this is something that uh, uh, could give a strong message already in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and in Southeastern Europe. Uh, energy collaboration uh, is something that the European Union also has been seeking for many, many years uh, as a way to reduce dependency of Russian uh, natural gas. But I think that um, given the positive momentum in, in Greek-Turkish relations over the last year uh, and uh, the attempts to, of both countries to identify areas for developing a common positive agenda, it is possible that uh, collaboration in the field of renewables can proceed. And uh, this uh, hopefully may produce opportunities for a new uh, pressure look on the outstanding disputes that can be resolved according to international law and for the benefit of uh, both uh, the Greek people, the Turkish people, and the whole region. So, Vangeli, I would like to thank you very much for this discussion and look forward to another conversation on uh, issues that refer to Turkey, Greece, and uh, our region as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yannick. This was another Eliamep podcast, recording, editing, and sound editing by Petros Karpathiou. Follow us on the Eliamep channels on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and elsewhere.